the presenting signs and symptoms of adrenal insufficiency are often nonspecific, resulting in long delays in diagnosis. Nonspecific features include fatigue is extremely common in adrenal insufficiency. Fatigue and gastrointestinal complaints often lead to an incorrect diagnosis. Weight loss is primarily due to anorexia, but dehydration may contribute. The amount of weight lost can vary from 2 to 15 kilograms and may not become evident until adrenal failure is advanced. Gastrointestinal symptoms, usually nausea, occasionally vomiting, abdominal pain, or diarrhea that may alternate with constipation, are common and correlate with the severity of adrenal insufficiency. Vomiting and abdominal pain often herald adrenal crisis, and the fluid loss due to vomiting or diarrhea may precipitate the crisis. The cause of gastrointestinal symptoms in adrenal insufficiency is not known. Esophagogastroduodenoscopy and gastrointestinal radiography are usually normal, but gastric emptying may be delayed. Peptic ulcer disease is rare. Steatorrhea responsive to glucocorticoid replacement has occasionally been reported. Gastrointestinal symptoms are less common in secondary adrenal insufficiency, suggesting that electrolyte disturbances may be involved in their etiology. Amenorrhea develops in approximately 25% of women. It may be due to the effects of chronic illness or weight loss. Women with autoimmune-mediated adrenal insufficiency may develop autoimmune-mediated primary ovarian insufficiency. Women with pituitary disease may develop hypogonadal hypogonadism. Diffuse myalgia and arthralgia are frequent symptoms in patients with adrenal insufficiency. Occasional patients have predominantly musculoskeletal symptoms, and a few have flexion contractures of legs. Serum concentrations of muscle enzymes, muscle biopsy, and electromyography are usually normal. The myalgia and arthralgia disappear rapidly with hormone replacement. Contractures may take months and require orthopedic measures. Many patients with severe or long-standing, untreated adrenal insufficiency have psychiatric symptoms, including impairment of memory that can progress to confusion, delirium, and stupor, depression, manifested by apathy, poverty of thought, and lack of initiative, psychosis, manifested by social withdrawal, irritability, negativism, poor judgment, agitation, hallucinations, paranoid delusions, and bizarre or catatonic posturing. These psychiatric symptoms occur early in the disease and may predate other symptoms, making the diagnosis of their cause difficult. Most of these symptoms disappear within a few days after glucocorticoid therapy is begun, but the psychosis may persist for several months. Improvement does not correlate with correction of electrolyte imbalance except, on occasion, in patients with severe hyponatremia. Calcification of the auricular cartilages may occur in long-standing adrenal insufficiency. This finding occurs exclusively in men, it is thought to result from chronic cortisol deficiency and does not improve with glucocorticoid replacement. Signs and symptoms that are more specific for primary adrenal insufficiency include, cardiovascular symptoms include postural dizziness or syncope. In most patients, the blood pressure is low, but some have only postural hypotension. These symptoms are most common in primary adrenal insufficiency due to volume depletion resulting from aldosterone deficiency. Salt craving, sometimes with massive salt ingestion, for example, pickle juice, is a distinctive feature in some patients. To make it more palatable, salt may be chased with lemon juice. Increased thirst for iced liquids is often reported. Hyperpigmentation, which is evident in nearly all patients with chronic primary adrenal insufficiency, is the most characteristic physical finding. It is a consequence of cortisol deficiency and is due to increased production of proopiomelanocortin, a prohormone that is cleaved into the biologically active hormones corticotropin, melanocyte stimulating hormone, and others. The elevated melanocyte stimulating hormone results in increased melanin synthesis, causing hyperpigmentation. In humans, melanin is synthesized in epidermal melanocytes lying just below the basal cells of the epithelium. The resulting brown hyperpigmentation is generalized but is most conspicuous in areas exposed to light, such as the face, neck, and backs of hands, and areas exposed to chronic friction or pressure, such as the elbows, knees, spine, knuckles, waist, midriff, and shoulders. Pigmentation is also prominent in the palmar creases, where it escapes being worn away by friction, and in areas that are normally pigmented, such as the areoli, axillae, perineum, and umbilicus. However, since pigmentation of the palmar creases may be normal in darker-skinned individuals, comparison with other family members and the presence or absence of additional abnormal pigmentation should be considered when evaluating this palmar hyperpigmentation. Other patterns of hyperpigmentation include. The vermilion, outer, border of the lips may darken. 
patchy pigmentation on the inner surface of lips and the buccal mucosa along the line of dental occlusion. It may also occur under the tongue, along the gingival border in patients with chronic periodontal disease, and on the hard palate. Generalized buccal, vaginal, and anal mucosal membrane hyperpigmentation is usually seen only in patients whose skin is normally pigmented. Hyperpigmentation in general is less noticeable in black individuals, but generalized darkening may be evident. Existing freckles become darker, and numerous new brown or black freckles may appear. Scars acquired when primary adrenal insufficiency is present and untreated are permanently pigmented, those acquired earlier remain unpigmented, and those acquired during treatment do not become pigmented. The hair and nails may become darker, the nails showing longitudinal bands of darkening. 